Hey guys, welcome back. Today I wanted to talk about the new Snap-on scanner, the Triton D8. Now, it looks very similar to this scanner that I've had for a couple years. This is the Snap-on Modus Edge. So what are the differences between these two scanners? Because this one came out in 2016. At least that's when mine came out. Um, that's the date on the back. This one just came out this weekend. They look the same. They function the same. This one has newer software than mine. I'm running 18.2 software. This has 19.2 software. But what this has that the Modus doesn't have is the intelligent diagnostic software. So it is a little more expensive on the Zeus platform, but when they came out with this platform to replace the Modus, it's actually the same price. People will say it costs more because you have to buy a year subscription of updates up front. It used to be three years. They just changed that rule to one year. Um, so that's an extra $1,500 that you have to pay at the time of purchase, or you can sign up for monthly subscription fees. Either way, um, another $1,500 on top of the total compared to these two scanners, but they both run about $6,000. Now, I don't know if Snap-on's getting rid of this one here soon and replacing it with this. They've already discontinued the, uh, the Solus Edge, and that's because they're pushing the Apollo. So let me show you what this has for features versus this. Okay, so I just plugged in the Triton D8 into my Toyota 4Runner. This is probably too old for the automatic ID. So we're just gonna manually select it. The check engine light is on. I have scanned it in the past. I have parts sitting in the door that I've had sitting there for two years. So let's go engine, it's an automatic display codes and I don't know if the intelligent diagnostic will work on this particular vehicle and also I have not set up a wireless connection so that may uh, hinder us a little bit so I've got a couple codes here p0125 insufficient time or temperature for closed loop o2 sensor fault bank one sensor one o2 sensor slow response bank one sensor one so let's see if the intelligent diagnostic will work with this first I'm going to save these codes if you're hooked up to the Altus drive or the Altus cloud, as soon as you pull a complete code scan on the newer vehicles, I believe it's 04 and up, it'll automatically upload it to the internet. The older ones, you're still gonna have to save it, I believe, unless they've changed that in the last update. Okay, let me connect to the internet and then I'll get right back to this screen. Okay, now that I'm connected to the internet, let's try this again. Let's click on this P0125. downloading content so this right here this section is the sure track information that is the most commonly replaced parts um, it's real similar to identifix so most commonly uh, is that little yellow line replace engine coolant thermostat and there's probably more data over here um, but what that code is is the vehicle is not warming up enough or it's taking too long to warm up It'll show us TSBs. If there was a service bulletin for that code, it would be listed here. And then down here, code specific scanner data. Let's click that. It should bring us to the data that most pertains to the code that we have. And as you can see, it's a very simple list. So we'll have a fast data refresh rate. Let me go ahead and start the vehicle. So for this, all we really need, because uh, the Toyotas don't show you runtime typically, is the RPM and the coolant temp. So as you can see, the coolant temp is a little too low. I just drove this down to the shop a couple miles. It should have been warmed up by now, but it's not quite there. So in this particular instance, this information was helpful. On some of the newer vehicles that have a lot of data PIDs, they don't always get all of them, but Snap-on is improving these with each update. So I'm sure it'll get better as the product evolves. If you don't see the data that you need, you can hit the back button. And here was a smart data list that it showed me, but here we can go to the complete data list. If they didn't make all the right choices and you wanna see additional information, that's a step you'll have to take. And it looks like all of the information is here. So let's go ahead and go back and check on one of the other codes. And instead of going all the way back to the code list, now that we're in the intelligent diagnostic menu, I can hit this button. I can go to the O2 sensor and it'll update the data for that code. 
So most common, replace oxygen sensor. No TSBs or recalls. And specific data. So right here is a little more information. These blue flags mean that those are some key items we need to look for. And if you get out of range on these, they will turn red. Now the fuel trim code isn't going, or the fuel trims here aren't going to show us a lot of information because that O2 sensor is responding slow. It is not a rich or a lean code, but they did highlight those ones. Now, one of the items that I would have looked at is the O2 sensor, bank one sensor one voltage. As you can see, it is stuck all the way one direction, which that would be lean, but the fuel trims aren't uh, coordinating that. So the computer, since it has a fault code in there, is probably running off of a base map or basing stuff off of the rear O2 sensor. So they still need to touch this stuff up a little bit. And this is an older vehicle, so it's probably not a key vehicle of focus for them. So if I click on this, they changed the icons on me a little bit. I think we want to go there, go to graphs. Okay, so they do show the flag still even in graphing mode. And right here is my O2 sensor. Now the data may not be super fast because I have so much stuff selected, um, but it is still less stuff than the original engine data list. And we've been running now for a couple minutes. It should be well into switching. So I can tell right away that this O2 sensor is not functioning properly. The heater circuit is probably bad. Now that we've looked at the scanner data, we can confirm that with the scope that's built in. This scanner is equipped with a two channel scope. Um, there's no functional test for this one, but if we go down a little bit further, guided component test. So let's click on that and it's gonna show us exactly what we need to do to test those. So we can test the ECM, the O2 sensor or the rear O2 sensor. I'm guessing this one is the front one. So first we can go to component information. Now some of this stuff is the same as the guided component test in the MODIS, but this brings me straight to what I need based off of the codes alone. So it's gonna show me the connector, what the wires are, what each pin does, and the best place to test it. Now, I'm not gonna actually hook up to the vehicle for this, but this would be my waveform up here. And then down here at the bottom will give us more information on how to test it. And it should give us a known good signal. And right here is what my signal look, should look like if I was connected to that sensor on the uh, signal. So it gives you the uh, component information, where to test it, what a known good waveform is. Now there are other scopes out there that are possibly more powerful, but they don't have the uh, built-in you know, information on how to connect to it, what it should look like. Um, you have to do it all manually. Now some of the other stuff it has is it does have generic OBD2. If you're doing quick fault codes or checking the readiness information for emissions testing, that's located under there. You can also clear codes. Guided component tests, if you didn't want to have to go through the whole intelligent diagnostic thing and you want to go straight to here, that will guide you through it. If you want to control the scope yourself, um, you just go to this screen. You can pick lab scope, graphing multimeter, digital multimeter. And that's similar to a, a DVOM, except for it does have the faster response rate and graphing um, for lab scope usage. Quick lookup is vehicle specs, oil capacity, stuff like that. Your previous vehicles, it should have the codes that we saved in there. So you can access all of this information. It's right there. And setup. Now, one thing that I did notice with this one that I don't know if my other one has is you can darken the screen. Now, the home page still stays as bright white. But if we go to system settings, display, color theme, we can go to a night mode. So if that's too bright for you, if you're working in a dark shop, or if you're on a evening test drive, graphing data, once you get into anything other than the home page, it goes into night mode with a black background and white text. My Snap-on dealer told me that this scan tool does have a faster processor and more memory than the Modus Edge does. And that's primarily because the intelligent diagnostic stuff takes up a little more space. Um, I know it's downloading information off the internet, but it takes more, uh, more processing power to display all that information. And the boot up time is a little bit faster than mine. Now I'm gonna go into the demonstration vehicle just to show a few more things you can do. 
Um, they have more codes in here and some of the newer vehicles, especially the domestic stuff, has a lot more uh, stuff on the intelligent diagnostics. So full code scan, it's gonna scan every module in the vehicle and see how many codes it can come up with. So one thing that the full scan does is it also checks the uh, OB2 uh, readiness monitors, test completed, misfire, fuel system, compre comprehensive component. Not complete is EGR, catalyst, EVAP, O2 sensor, and the O2 sensor heater. So if you print out this screen here, it gives you a full printout and the readiness monitors all in one page. Now this is very handy for the pre-scan, post-scan that Snap-on has uh, developed. So if you scan all this stuff in, after you're done with the repairs, you clear the codes, you take it for a test drive, you scan it again, um, you can print out two pages, one with the pre-scan and one with the post-scan. So let's go to the uh, engine misfire detected and see what the intelligent diagnostics has for that. So replace spark plugs, wires, coils, fuel injectors. So kind of all over the place, but the spark plug is the most common. We're gonna go down here and there are service bulletins. So let's click that and see what there is. So there are three different service bulletins that list the P0300 code. Let's just click on one and see what happens. So it pulls up the whole bulletin, which vehicle it applies to, and information on how to test for a damaged uh, camshaft, lifters, valve leakage, active fuel management lifters, a um, bunch of different stuff. So it's gonna show you that right up front. You don't have to go back to, uh, to Mitchell or All Data or Identifix and punch in that code to find the service bulletin information. And they probably have more data on this one than they did on my 4Runner. Let's go ahead and go in here and find out. So this is just a demonstration video. So that is the red flag showing that it is out of spec on that uh, data PID. So these other ones are blue. This one's counting misfires. It immediately gives you a red flag. Let me go back to the PID list. And we can see a lot more information here. It's also beeping to let me know that uh, something happened. So I don't know if that was a fault code. Oh, and it even saved the data for us. So if we were on a test drive with this open, obviously you don't wanna be uh, looking at your scan tool while test driving. Um, sometimes I'll drive with my thumb over the save button. If I feel a miss or something, I'll hit the save button, come back to the shop and look at that data. This is going to save that information for you automatically. I think that's gonna wrap it up for uh, some of the features that the Triton has over the Modus. Um, both very good scan tools. They may be running sales on the Moda soon if they're planning on discontinuing and bringing this one in. But at the same time, since this one is new, you may be able to find some pretty good deals on this as they introduce it into the market. Um, I know that they're doing some good trade-ins on this one. I don't know if they're still doing good trade-ins on the Modus. So if your dealer has some of these, they may be wanting to replace them with this one. Um, so check with your dealer for pricing. As far as I know, they're both around $6,000 um, retail. This one, extra $1,500, so $7,500 total. This one, the same price out the door, but you're gonna have to pay for uh, subscription updates. So in a year from now, you're gonna have to pay $12.99. So it comes out to about the same. I don't know if I'll be getting one of these in the shop or not. We're talking about trading in one of our Solus Ultras, and I don't know if we're gonna trade it on this or go for the Apollo. Um, possibly even the Solus Edge, but we already have one Modus in the shop and then I have my own and I have the Zeus, so I don't think we need another one with a lab scope. We probably just need another basic one. But if I do end up with this in the shop, I'll get some uh, real world experience, check it out, make sure there's no flaws. If I find stuff, I'll let you guys know. Um, I haven't had too many issues with the Modus. Um, I do have wireless issues. It disconnects from my Wi-Fi. I have to re-enter the password, kind of annoying. Um, Snap-on says it's my router, but I've been through three different ones and it acts the same. So I am running older software as well. So maybe with the 19.2 software, that would be fixed. If you guys have any questions, put those down below. I'll try to get back to you. If, uh, if it's a question I don't know, then I will try to get the answer from either my Snap-on rep or the diagnostic rep. And if you guys have any questions about this one, I can probably answer it because I've been using this one for a couple years. If you want to see more videos like this, Subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.
Action! Hi mechanics, welcome to my garage. This is where I fix things. Today, I'm gonna show you my new iPad. It's right here. This is my old iPad. It's right here. I paid three million dollars for this one. It's okay, I use it about every day. This one right here is the new iPad. It's about three million too. I use it never. Cause it's new, brand new right now today. But I wanted to make the upgrade because I used to like the black color, but now I like the blue. Have a good day! <laughs>